We're here on the job site in Everglades with Murphy Pipeline. Uh, we've done 11,000 feet in about 11 days. The project has been going very well. Uh, they're probably about 30 days ahead of schedule already and uh, expecting to finish the project about two months uh, ahead of time. Here we are at the uh, Everglades National Park. We are currently in the middle of a pipe bursting project for the National Park with CDM, Camp Dresser and McKay engineers. The environment you're looking at now has already been burst. The far end is just the pits that have been left open from the burst yesterday are now being filled in. If you actually pan across to the left hand side you'll see the swamp areas that we've been bursting around and through and you can see that there's minimal impact uh, to the environment. The beauty of the Vermeer bursting system, the 3038, is a small and lightweight in the compaction. The compaction issue being so light and easy to move, move around, as you can see with this um, three ton excavator, it's no problem actually moving it on and off of our truck. Getting it to the job site is no problem whatsoever. Um, once again, it's just the, I can't say too more about this machine, just the compactness and the ease of actually putting it into the hole, taking it from from the job site to the job site, I should say, from our yard. As you see, the rods are already in the line. We push the rods by the actual excavator. We find that quicker than actually payloading them in with the, the bursting rig. One good point that we have found with the bursting rig is the, the quickness of the hydraulic rams. When we're actually pulling back 500 foot, which we're doing on this shot, we're actually paying out and bringing them back in less than an hour, which in our eyes is, uh, is good considering the kind of consumption that we need to work with to make sure people get back onto to water. Uh, basically what we're doing here, we're using a steel plate to actually put down in front of the bursting rig. When we started, first started bursting in Florida, using the soils here being so soft, we had trouble anchoring the machine down. What we found was the actual the softness of the ground was pulling the rig into the ground. So we come up with an idea of putting a bursting plate. Basically by putting this plate here, what we actually do is uh, disperse the force onto the plate. So it anchors the machine in and stops it pulling into the soft soils. As you can see, once we have the steel plate in position, then we need back the lorry back with the power pack on and just hook up the leads to give us the hydraulic power to the bursting unit. Once the leads are on, as you can see how easy it is to actually get the leads on. We start the power pack, then we're ready to go with the bursting rig. What we're going to do now is basically screw the, the next rod in so we're all hooked up and we're going to go to the pit B at the other end of the job and hook up the expander and the splitting head to the HDPE so that we're ready to go. Uh, basically what we got on the end in pit B is our rods are through. We are now attaching the splitting head to the rods. Once we have the splitting heads actually pulled on, uh, screwed onto the rods, we'll pull that back into the pipe slightly, then we'll attach the expander and our pipe to the expander. What we're going to do now is attach the expander to the splitting head and the back of the expander. You'll see our rod with our shackles which then will hook to the HDPE pipe which is already pre-chlorinated. Once we have all this hooked up then we'll start bursting and pulling back. To attach the expander, as you can see, we just hook it to the back of the splitting head and the pin goes through and anchors it in place. It's a simple, easy, quick method. At the end of the pipe, we have the, the pulling eye, which basically is an expanding eye that inserts inside the pipe and we turn it out on the fins, which actually locks the pulling eye into the pipe. That is what actually attached to the back of the expander. Once it's in position, the shackles just screwed into the pulling eye. And the pipe is then ready to be burst. Then we hook wire to the end of the pipe. So once the HDP is in, then we have a way of tracing the pipe. You see the splitter will start splitting the pipe and the expander will expand the pipe out.
As you see, the splitter has now split the pipe. The expanding head has moved back over the HTP to actually protect the pipe. Now it's just a process of pulling the hydraulic unit back and just pulling the rods in. Using the, the uh, Vermeer system, you can see also the speed of which we're actually pulling back, which is what we like about it. The hydraulic rams seem to move faster than most rigs, speeding up the pullback time, which is a benefit for what we are actually approving. As you can see, the rod, the hydraulic machine is pulling back the rods. As we pull the rods back, they're unscrewed and put back into the carrying boxes. You can see the speed of the of the rig. That's what we actually like about the hydro, uh, the Vermeer Hydro Burst is the speed of the rams. It works out that we're we're possibly bursting uh, in the region of five foot a minute, which is a good pullback ratio. And as you can see by the pressure that we're actually pulling back on the gauge, we're probably pulling back about 12,000 uh, pound which isn't too bad for a six inch pullback. As you say, there's plenty of full steel left in the machine. As you can see, once we pay the, the rods back, they get stacked away into their own boxes, cradles, which once again makes an easy uh, delivery to and from the site. Once the actual rods are in, we slide a, uh, a gate down in front of them, stop the rods from paying out, and then we load them onto the truck and basically the rods are done with. Now we're getting to the end of the run. Once the rods are paid out and we get the expander onto the steel plate, we back the machine backwards and then we put the cradle, which is on the side of the trench to the left, in front of the machine, which gives us the ability then we'll lift the plate out of the hole and we will pull the pipe and the expander into the hole so that we can disconnect it. Basically now with the pipe, the splitting head is to the, the received trench. What we're going to do now is back the machine up by moving the pins and drop the pulling cage in front of the machine. Then we will take the plate out. Once the plate's out, we'll pull the pipe into the pit. Now we're positioned the cradle, the box in front of the machine. Once that's gonna, we get that into place, then we can pull the pipe into the hole. Basically you can see now that we've got the, the, um, the splitting head and the expander behind it and the HTP is just behind that. What we are going to do now is just bring the backhoe up to it, hook on the wire and just pull it into the trench. As you can see we have just now burst 500 foot of 6 inch HDPE and basically the time it took was an hour and 15 minutes. The pipe's in the hole now, what we will do now is just pull her up into the trench so we can get ready for super chlorinating. We'd like to point out that we have actually put 11,000 feet of pipe in the ground in the last 11 days using the Vermeer Hydroburst machine. Actually on the, the rig that we're using from Vermeer, there is only 38 hours of actual use to burst 11,000 feet of pipe. That alone uh, speaks for itself, speaks for the support and the backup we are getting from Vermeer, which is second to none. Well, we would definitely be using Vermeer again and uh, hopefully the partnership with Vermeer and the National Park Service and Murphy Pipelines will carry on. We special ordered our pipe to come in on coils. The reason is for that is it's a lot easier for us to pre-chlorinate with. We wanted to actually use the pipe uh, SDR 17 rating but we couldn't coil the 6 inch for SDR 17 so we had to go down to SDR 13.5. On the 4 inch coils we have 500 foot and on the 6 inch coils we have 400 foot.